You know, I'm not a history buff. In fact, I'm not any kind of buff, which is why I try to stay out of the buff. But I do like to take old things, figure out how they work, and then make my own modern version. For example, this antique flintlock musket. I've made a modern version out of this piece of East Trough downspout, see? My hammer is this tack hammer, and my triggering mechanism is this fishing reel. When I hit the release, the point of the hammer will slam down through the window and detonate my ammo. Okay, so what are we gonna use for ammo? Well, if you're fighting the enemy, you wanna whip them, you wanna cream them. How about whipped cream? And of course, you wanna jam that in there, pack her down, just like Davy Crockett, or Betty Crockett. And our projectile, now we're gonna use an eggplant. Not really a bullet, but it'll go through you like one. Okay, let's see if we're ready. Yep. With any luck, I'll hit a vegetarian. You know what they say, don't shoot till you see the whites of their eggs. Our neighbor up here is a pain in the neck. Mind you, they could probably say the same thing. <laughs> they got no fences and they grow all of these grapes, which is fine, but they taste awful. I mean, there's nothing worse than stealing something that has no value. <laughs> it's like hot wiring a K car. I'll call Red. Yeah. I was just. Have you been stealing grapes again? <laughs> yeah, but I'm not enjoying them. <laughs> I mean, they're real sour here. Not for eating, those are wine grapes. So when something's not good enough to eat, you drink it? <laughs> Ontario grapes make some of the finest wine in the world. How come you know everything, Harold? Hmm? It's just an unconscious reaction to seeing what can happen when you're the exact opposite. <laughs> Was that an insult? Not if you have to ask. <laughs> Okay, so you're saying even if these grapes taste like an armpit, <laughs> they make great wine? Yeah, things in life are often much different than they appear. That's gotta be good news for you. <laughs> so I'm thinking we, we could make our own wine. By stealing the neighbor's grapes? It's not stealing if the grapes are on our property, Harold. They got no fence and a lot of the vines are over the lot line, or at least they will be once I tug on them a little. <laughs> You don't know anything about making wine. I don't base my life on knowledge, Harold. I base it on courage and cunning. And socialized medicine. You know what? I'll make the wine without you. And that's sour grapes. <laughs> This coupon from Mr. Guido's Barbershop and Craft Emporium. <laughs> You'll love our homemade mittens made entirely from nose hair. <laughs> Come on in and pick yours today. <laughs> All right, Glenn, uh, cover your ears. <clears throat> okay, Red, you have uh, 30 seconds to get Glenn Braxton to say this word. Work. <laughs> Work. <laughs> and go. Okay, Glenn, this is something people do for most of their lives. Age. No, okay, no, no. Other than sleep, people do this a lot. Nap. No, okay, you finish your breakfast, you say, see you later, honey, I'm going to... Lie down. No, but I mean, like to have money, to put food on the table, you go to... The wife's purse. No, okay, okay, Glenn, if you were, say, a mechanic or a carpenter, you'd make sure you had a something bench. Comfortable. No. Oh, this is something happy people do, okay? Whistle while you... 
relieve yourself. <laughs> right, right there. Yeah. Almost out of time. Okay, okay. Okay, Glenn, you're retired now, but what did you used to do every week, Monday to Friday? Phone in sick. <laughs> now, Glenn, you're, you're not thinking about this. This is a word for a job, okay? Where you go in every day, put in your time, and then at the end of the week, you get paid. I heard about this, right? I, I just could never make it work for me. There we go! Where has all the fun gone? Where has all the joy gone? Right here at Harold's Hobby House! <laughs> And joining me today at Harold's Hobby House is Mr. Dalton Humphrey of the Humphreys Everything Store. And we call it that because that store has everything. <laughs> well, not everything, but it certainly has a lot. <laughs> so, Dalton, why don't you tell us about your hobby? Well, you know, Harold, it's something I've been doing for many years. Coin collecting. <gasps> yeah. This is <laughs> fascinating. Yeah. Now, in these containers are coins I've collected. Pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, loonies, toonies. It's a complete set. Well, I can certainly see that. Yeah. Now, which is the most valuable coin you have? The Toonies. <laughs> Those are worth two bucks. <laughs> but I'm always on the lookout for what's valuable, oh, right? Okay, goodness. now, Harold, for example, do you have any coins in your pocket right now? Why, coins? yes, I do. Aha, <laughs> uh aha, -huh, uh -huh. okay, great. 37 cents! Okay, now, I, this is great, because now I can show you how this coin collection really works, okay? <laughs> this is good. Okay, all right. We just simply divide them into the denominations and place them... <laughs> ...in the correct jars. <laughs> now... ...in this way... I have increased the value of this collection by 37, 37 cents. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there are lots of things that men enjoy, but the two main ones are boats and beds. Unfortunately, we're often disappointed in our boats. But there's no disappointment in bed, at least not for me. I can sleep anywhere at any time. We should explain what happened to this boat. But rather than dwell on the negative aspects of property damage and pending legal action, instead, I'm going to do a project that combines two of my favorite things. Men like doing stuff like that. Taking two enjoyable activities and combining them, like french fries and gravy, or beer and football, or beer and women wrestling. Okay, that's three, but anyway, I'm going to join up a bed and a boat and make a bed boat, or a boat bed. I'll decide what to call it later. Now, the first step in making your own boat bed is to get yourself a bed frame. I prefer the wooden boats. Eh? More character, more history, and they can survive the biggest ocean swells. I'll bet this baby has seen some dandy swells. <laughs> you want to use air mattresses for this job? Regular mattresses don't work too well when they're wet. Just ask Harold. <laughs> now, with the help of the handyman's secret weapon, the bed frame becomes your boat's keel, and the mattresses become your hull. And there's your boat bed, or bunk boat. I'll worry about what to call it later. This design was originated by a European boat building company, Winkin' Blinkin' and Nod. I adapted her a little, you know, with the air mattress technology, and I hacked up a garden hose, connected them together so I can blow up all the air mattresses at once. <laughs> I mean, the bad news is that I wrecked the garden hose, but hey, I hate gardening. Okay, let's blow up our bunk boat, or water bed, or waterborne bed. I'll figure out what to call it later. Okay, that was a bit of a logic test there. And you look at the size of all those air mattresses, and then measure that against my lung capacity. That was just a lack of consciousness waiting to happen. <laughs> Never send a man on a machine's job. <laughs> okay, we're good to go here. See the way this air mattress goes right around the motor? Kind of makes it like an inboard. 
pure class. Oh, you might want to go with a small prop on the motor, too. Otherwise, you're going to be putting notches into the bed post. And if you're a married guy, that's dangerous. So let's go cruising in our boat bed or bed. OK, I don't know what I'm going to call it. But I do know if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> You may not want to put a mattress, you know, that close to the prop. And don't link all the mattresses together to inflate, because they're still linked together to deflate. OK, I think they may have a name for this thing, but I'm going to wait until the camera's not running. day my wife sent me out to buy a new shower curtain but when I got home she told me it was all wrong how could a shower curtain be all wrong okay if I brought home a gas-powered weed whacker that would be on but it's like the time I brought the wrong paper clips or the wrong tea cozy or the wrong thyroid medicate okay that one okay, that was a mistake but you see where I'm going here then later I realized that it's all about expectations. Women actually have them. <laughs> Women have been planning the exact look and color scheme of their lives since they were kids. There are plans in their heads that are more detailed than those space flight simulators NASA uses. <laughs> Women spend hours on their buying decisions. Men don't plan, they haggle. If that shower curtain is 5% off because it's got paint splatters on it and it's made of asbestos, that's our new shower curtain. <laughs> anyway, my wife returned the all wrong curtain and got the completely perfect one. And yes, it is slightly bluer. <laughs> oh, sure, I could sit around and complain that my wife is picky, but the way I see it, she's already settled for a pretty big ticket item that doesn't look anything like what she had in mind. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Okay, we got the grapes all stopped. I knew we'd use that bathtub for something eventually. Well, it's gonna be a great year for wine in terms of quantity. Yeah. We made a thousand gallons. Well, there's 50 of us. Yeah. And if it's any good, well, we'll make more. Uncle Red, yeah. Uncle Red, look, look, I found this book about winemaking. Oh, yeah. You know, I thought maybe you might want to take a look at it or perhaps read it or have someone read it to you. <laughs> Harold, there are two kinds of people. The kind that make things happen and the kind that read about things that happen. Yes, in tomorrow's newspaper. <laughs> So to avoid yet another embarrassment, it might behoove you to educate yourself a little. A lot of irritating things in that statement, Harold, starting with the word behoove. Uncle Red, do you know anything about bottling wine? I know you should put a cork in it, Harold. I'm telling you, not just any idiot can make wine. Well, I'm gonna prove you wrong. Harold, it's a simple process. You squash the grapes, you throw in some sugar, a little bit of yeast, you let it stand in a jug at room temperature with a cork in the top. Ah, no, 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 not a cork, not a cork. It is a fermentation trap. Same diff. No, not same diff, big diff. <laughs> a fermentation trap allows the gases to escape safely. We should make lodge members wear them. Just relax, Harold, okay? It's not rocket science. <laughs> okay, maybe it is rocket science. <laughs> Never been exactly sure what repointing is. Uh, we were replacing the whole. Well, that's an Anook shook, I know that. It's actually more shook than Anook, and uh, Walter's tasted the mortar. How is it? Good. Need salt, or no, it's good. So we had built a ramp to bring the uh, mortar up to the uh, up to the chimney. We had to replace the whole thing, the liner and everything. And uh, I was just knocking the old bricks down. And I, di I didn't see Bill there. Maybe I should have looked. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. 
but the, uh, to bring the, the unit up was pretty heavy, so I let Walter just do it on his own. And, uh, oh! Okay, now maybe that's repointing. I don't know. Anyway, we get the bricks up there, and then uh, I'm still uh, taking the old liner out and so forth. And Bill's coming up to... Sorry, I didn't see you there. And then the, the liner is these uh, tubes, and the unfortunately got rolling. All of a sudden, we got Super Mario Brothers. Pretty good. Oh, you're, hey, you made it to the next level. Now, Bill uh, had his trowel in his pants. Don't ask. And, uh, but it's, it broke off, so he just grabs Walter's trowel. And uh, Walter's not happy with that, so he tries to grab it back. And next thing you know, he's got some uh, mortar. And, uh, and Bill finds that funny for a second. And, <laughs> and I find that funny for a second. And, uh, well, and it spirals downhill from there and eventually right down the ramp. This is, I don't recommend you try this at home or anybody's home, really. He gets down and he thought if he grabbed the, but there's a, there's cement, cement in the water. And the, but then we thought if we threw the skid, it would work as a brake. And maybe that would, well, the brake stopped part of it. So we come down to make sure Walter's okay, and uh, not only is he okay, he's... Where is he going? Hey, 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 wait a second! It should be our turn! There have been a lot of disturbing trends over the years, from four-cylinder cars to vegetarian pizza. But one of the worst has got to be one size fits all. Anybody who believes that has never seen wrestling or wrestling fans. One size fits all is really the manufacturer saying one size suits us. Even with ice cubes. They're too big for the sissy drinks. Okay for your regular. But way too small to get the job done on a man size thirst or a wrestling fan size thirst. See, the problem is the ice cube tray. The compartments are all standardized, huh? One size fits all. <laughs> That's why I don't use ice cube trays. Not when I have another kind of tray that has plenty of different size compartments. Can you say, tackle box? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I have ice for any size drink or any size brews. See, kids, you can look cool and be cool at the same time. Oh, 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 oh. Well, we're all set for the first tasting of our homemade wine. <laughs> Throw in some charcoal briquettes and some possum lake water. So, I don't know whether it's a Carbonet or a Boja Lake. Uncle Red, I made yeah. you a surprise. Wow, what's that? What's that? Well, I made you a sign. Oh, Harold, I like that. Yeah. And I use magnetic letters. See, that way we can reuse it after you go out of business. You know, Harold, I think 250 a bottle is a little low. Well, let's wait till somebody tastes it. You wanted to see me, Red? Oh, yeah, yeah, Dalton, great. Uh, we need you to test our wine because you're the only guy with medical insurance. <laughs> A piece of cheese there, Harold. Wine and cheese, very popular with our target demographic. You want me to sniff the cork there, Red? No, it, it dissolved for some reason. Is this red or white wine? I don't know. Kind of a blue. You know, it looks a little cloudy. Yeah, it's supposed to clear up this afternoon. <laughs> Is it good? Is it the cheese? <laughs> that can't be good. Wine tasters always spit out the wine. Not violently. Hey, hey, Red, look at this. The wine cleaned the glass. 
Here, Harold. Try it on your glasses. Take them off first. No, don't get any in your eyes. <laughs> This is amazing! You have a beard? <laughs> you know, we need a little marketing expertise. Just because we can't sell it as wine doesn't mean we can't sell it. Huh? I'm ahead of you, Uncle Red. Yeah? Watching. I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and I'm hoping you're going to be in a romantic mood for a romantic evening. You put out the candles, I'll supply the wine, and we'll clean all the mirrors in the bedroom. <laughs> the rest of you, thanks for watching. I'm half myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge. Keep your stick on the ice. Bow your heads for the man's prayer. I'm, I'm a man, man and I can change if I have to. I guess. All right, men, uh, after careful consideration and one mouthful, uh, we've decided to market our wine as window washer. So we'll have a lot fewer drunk drivers and they'll have clean windshields. 